Good morning. All right. So the announcements haven't changed since last time. The homework assignment's due on Tuesday. Um, if you've got questions, let me know. We're going to be working on a couple of examples today that I think will uh, help you to interpret and break those problems down into smaller and more manageable pieces. Um, looking a little bit further into the future, although it didn't make it onto the slide here, but we have an exam two weeks from today. So that exam two weeks from today is only going to be covering chapters two and three. If you want to start reviewing way, way early, then you can get a head start on that. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of key points from the homework problems that you're needing to solve, just to refresh your memory a little bit about how you solve these problems of hydrostatic forces on a flat surface. So one of the problems that you have is a gate that is held at a pivot to hold back water inside of a tank. And um, so you can see from both the dimensions and the little description that the gate is four meters tall and then it's also four meters wide. So it's square. Uh, in fact, you have another problem where it doesn't give you the dimensions, but it mentions in the problem statement that the gate is square. So um, sometimes you have to look, uh, the, the clues are subtle about the shape of these gates. But in this case, um, you know, the, the procedure that we went through several times uh, last class period, you can apply that same procedure. First of all, you want to find the magnitude of the force. And so that's going to be a function of the uh, depth to the centroid, the area of the gate, and the unit weight of the fluid. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in this problem, the fluid is water. So uh, you, know, you can use the gamma of 9810. Oh, yeah, there it is, water. All right, so the magnitude. Then you have to find the location of the hydrostatic force. And you're in luck because this is a vertically oriented gate. And that makes things really easy. W why do we like the vertically oriented gates? What's easy about that? So the uh, y bar and the delta h are the same. And so if y bar is the same as delta h, then calculating ycp is pretty straightforward. So that YCP gives you the location of the hydrostatic force. And so in this case, it's going to be the vertical distance from the water line down to where the force is located. Now, this is a little confusing because sometimes in the problem statement, it says to find the force, but you're not sure exactly which force it's talking about. Here, there is a hydrostatic force that's pushing below the pivot to the right. And that's going to cause the gate to rotate in a counterclockwise fashion. And so to resist that rotation, this block is in place, and the block is pressing on the gate to the left. Now, it's not going to be pushing with the exact same force as the uh, hydrostatic force, because it's a different distance away from the pivot. Now, how do we know that the, uh, the location of the force is below the pivot? I haven't calculated it yet, but I already told you that the force is located below the pivot. Do you remember how and why that works? Yeah. Okay. Right. So he's remembering the pressure distribution diagram that we looked at last cl class period, where there's some positive pressure at the top of the gate, and the pressure is getting higher and higher the further you go. And so the center of pressure over that gate is going to be below the midpoint, because the pressure at the bottom of the gate is higher than the pressure at the top. So we don't know exactly where, but just qualitatively, we already know that it's going to be below this pivot point, since they've located the pivot halfway in the middle of the gate. And then from there, it just becomes a, a moment analysis problem. So the, you know, the hydrostatic force is causing a counterclockwise rotation of the gate. The block is going to be pressing in the opposite direction. And so you can multiply the magnitude of the force by the distance that they act away from the, uh, the pivot point. Good question. So you're wondering about that moment distance, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if we know that this is, this is the uh, centroid, then 
usually what here's the full version ycp is y bar blah 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 so ycp minus y bar is equal to i divided by y bar a this ycp minus y bar it's the distance between the uh, the centroid and the center of pressure so this will be your moment distance for that problem yeah Other questions? I have one more. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so what's the force of the gate? So because the block and the gate are creating a two force measure, so the force of the gate equals the force of the block. You're saying down here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. I, the, the gate is pushing on the block with the same magnitude but in opposite direction of the block pressing on the gate. So both of these forces are external forces acting on the gate. And then you could say that the gate resists those forces by pressing back with an equal amount of force. All right. So here's another one. Um, all right. It's asking you what is the P. This is just a force here. They labeled it P. And I wish they'd labeled it something else because sometimes we think of P means pressure. That's not what P means here. It's just some variable. So you have to pull up how much in order to begin opening this gate is the question. How hard do you have to pull? Now, obviously, the, the deeper the water is above the gate, the harder it's going to be to open. So if we break this down into steps, first of all, um, the dimensions that they've provided is that we have a three, four, and then obviously the height of the gate is going to be five meters. And so they don't actually, in the problem statement, say like the physical height. I think they do give you from the drawing that it's a two meter wide gate, but the height you have to calculate with three, four, five relationship there. Um, now, the location of the hydrostatic force is a little bit tricky here because of, let me dim the lights a little bit just so it's easier to see the colors. vast amount of time into this little animation here. So here's the centroid. There is the depth to the center of pressure. So let me do that again so you can appreciate all my hard work. Here's the original drawing, the centroid, and now the green line goes up to where the water surface would be. So you have to extend, imagine, imagine where the water surface would be. So this green line is YCP. And so you're going to have to do a little bit of geometry to know the uh, moment distance for each of the forces. Um, it seems to me, oh, OK. This little segment here, we're going to do an example during class today that will, uh, I hope, reinforce the idea of calculating the extra distance above the hinge. But when you know YCP, then you'll have to subtract that extra little distance because that doesn't contribute to the moment distance. You know, you've got your hydrostatic force, which is going counterclockwise, and P is causing a clockwise rotation in the gate. For the gate just beginning to open, there'll be an equilibrium. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the force P that causes uh, equilibrium between the hydrostatic force and its moment distance. And then you'll have to remember that the direction of P influences what you use as the moment distance. Now, P is straight up, straight up. The moment distance would be different if P was to the side. You know, if P was perpendicular to the gate, then that would change how much force is required compared to straight up. Why is that? Why is it that the direction of the force is going to give you a different moment distance? Yeah, Isaac. Exactly. Yeah, so in this case, the moment arm is three meters because it is the, the horizontal component of that gate's length. All right. Sure, go ahead. Um, well, there's gates all the time in canal systems, for example. And so let's say that uh, you wanted to open a gate because you know, you're a farmer or something. You probably wouldn't be opening a gate that's this big, a two by four meter gate. 
but it's possible that you could have a winch on the top here and you'd have to start lifting the gate somehow. And so if it pivoted on a hinge, then, I mean, I'm grasping at straws here. This, there's probably better ways to open a gate, but I think the example problem is really just to illustrate hydrostatics rather than to identify something you're likely to encounter in the real world. Is it possible to solve this as a vertical gate and then multiply by a ratio <coughs> of trigonometry? So you're saying to solve it as a gate that's oriented straight up and down? And then multiply by a ratio. I don't think so, but I could be wrong about that. But I, I think uh, I don't think that would work because the, uh, the location of the force is different when it's inclined than if it was vertical, the YCP distance. Um, there may be a shortcut. I'd be interested to see you try it and then yeah, see if it works out both ways. All right, any other questions? All right, so last time in class we had this two by three meter uh, plate that was oriented different ways in the water. First of all, it was vertical, then it was at an angle, and now I want to take it to the extreme. What if instead of being inclined, what if the plate is completely horizontal? I want to illustrate how you should uh, calculate the equivalent forces when you have a horizontal uh, plate like this. Um, so it says here, step one, find the equivalent hydrostatic force acting on top of the plate. Okay, so one, the uh, hydrostatic force All right, the force is the pressure at the centroid multiplied by the area. So that's delta H times gamma times A. So our delta H distance is five meters. You can see from the dimensions there, it's just five meters from the top edge of the plate to the water surface. Uh, the unit weight in this case, it's just water, so 9810 newtons per meter cubed. And then the, uh, the area for a two by three meter plate is six square meters. All right, so if we do it this way, it's 294 1,300 newtons. Um, but there's another way to look at it. We can also consider the weight of the water above the plate. So I'd like you to calculate that. What is the weight of water above the plate? All right. You've got your calculator. You know how to calculate the weight of water using the unit weight, gamma. Find out how much the water above the plate weighs. So our basic formula for this is that the weight is going to be equal to the volume multiplied by the unit weight of the water. So you have to say, what's the volume of water above this uh, horizontal gate, and so it's going to have a uh, area of two meters by three meters, and then since it's five meters below the surface, then that will give us the vertical component of that element, and then you multiply it by 9810 newtons per meter cubed. So you probably saw the direction this was headed in. The uh, the hydrostatic force acting over an area due to pressure gives you the same answer as the weight of water above the gate. And I uh, illustrate that point because um, we're going to consider the weight above a gate pretty extensively when we're working with curved surfaces, you know, gates that uh, aren't necessarily flat. Things get interesting when we have curved surfaces, and so uh, I wanted to put the suggestion in your mind that the weight of water above the gate is equal to the vertical forces. And we'll break these curved surface problems into vertical components and horizontal components. All right, so here's what we're going to do with the uh, rest of class period. Um, I have a handout I'm going to provide to you, which you can work with a partner. And um, you should both work your own paper, but then only one of them needs to be submitted, and I'm going to give you homework points for what you're working on today. 
Um, I've got two problems on the first side of the paper. You can see here is a circular plate. So a new kind of shape. It's at an angle. Oh, I need to change something. Uh, it is actually six meters. Yeah, as it's showing there, six meters. All right. So it's six meters under the surface. The angle is defined by this three, four, five triangle. And then the diameter of the circular plate is 2.764 meters. So you'll go through steps and ultimately tell me the magnitude and location of the force. And then on the back side of the problem, I step you through uh, what looks a little bit more complicated. It's uh, a flat plate at an angle, but Instead of, being, uh, instead of being into the water, it's actually that the water is projecting out further than it ordinarily would because of the gate. Now, the same principles apply. You're going to follow the same steps of the depth of the centroid of the gate, pressure at the centroid, and so on in order to solve this. But then it's another case where, because of the 30-degree uh, angle, and obviously the Y bar and the uh, delta H are going to be different. So let me give you this hand. I think by now most people have already finished uh, the first problem. So the delta H was 7.1056. The F is 418 kilonewtons. Area moment of inertia, 2.865 meters to the fourth. And then YCP, 8.936 meters. All right. Great. Sorry to kill the mood. That's right. Good. Yeah. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, yeah. 